crazy alert. Experts will hold discussions Monday on whether another active fault exists beneath the Tsuruga nuclear power plant in central Japan. Uh, let's see that in instant replay. Experts will hold discussions Monday on whether another active fault exists beneath the Tsuruga nuclear power plant in central Japan. What the fuck? If it does, a reactor at the plant could be scrapped, as were the four reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant in northeastern Japan. There are 17 commercial nuclear plants across Japan, plus one major research reactor. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority has ordered geological surveys for some of these sites. Experts have conducted an inspection at the Tsuruga nuclear plant. Tsuruga is the only plant in Japan that has an active fault close to the reactors. What the fuck? If another fault called D1 directly under the plant's reactor is determined to be active, the plant will be barred from restarting. I thought that was the stupidest answer. Regulation Authority official Kunihiko Shimazaki and other scientists have examined the plant. They conducted a so-called trench survey by digging into the ground beneath the compounds to examine the faults. They confirmed that the Urasoko fault is active. They also had a close look at D1 fault, which runs directly beneath the reactor. Our team shared the view that the deformation of D1 was caused by a force similar to the one that caused the Urasoko fault to move. What the fuck? Government guidelines prohibit building a key nuclear power facility on an active fault. Monday's meeting is drawing attention as the reactor above D1 may have to be scrapped. That will depend on the assessment reached by experts and the NRA. <laughs> Let's see that in an instant replay. Russia will help China build two nuclear reactors at a power plant in China. What the fuck? This is part of a plan to expand energy cooperation between the two nations. The agreement was signed by Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev and Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao when they met in Moscow. The two leaders also agreed to expand bilateral cooperation on nuclear energy usage. Russia's state nuclear energy corporation Rosatom says the construction of two new reactors will begin later this month at a Chinese nuclear power plant in Jiangsu province. Medvedev said the two nations will soon sign another agreement to boost energy cooperation not only on nuclear energy but also on oil and natural gas. Russia has been active to export nuclear power technology and facilities to emerging economies. That's despite the nuclear accident in Japan last year. This goes to the, uh, the safety question, and, uh, and uh, it also addresses the, uh, the elephant in the living room. Uh, whenever I hear people say, let's restart, send no fray when life and death are very breath, is what to say. They talk of two fluidity, elastic instability, and Fukushima rises like a mushroom-headed snake. What part of Fukushima do you not understand when nuclear contamination hits the fan? Plutonium is everywhere, it's in the sea, it's in the air, and we don't even have a good evacuation plan. What part of Fukushima do you not understand? I would like um, Peter Pinker to answer that. <laughs>
Delegates to the UN Climate Change Conference in Doha, Qatar, are divided over a key issue, money. They're debating how much money developing nations should receive to help them tackle global warming. The 18th round of the conference, known as COP18, ends Friday. Environment ministers and other officials have been meeting behind closed doors for 12 days. Developing countries are demanding that industrialized nations provide extensive subsidies in exchange for their support of key issues. The issues include a new emission reduction framework in which every country would participate. The framework would be launched in 2020. Delegates have agreed to an interim plan that will start next year. Delegates also discuss ways to continue the Kyoto Protocol until the new framework kicks in. The protocol is scheduled to expire at the end of this year. An eight-year extension of the pact is gaining support. But it's not yet known if countries that don't sign on to the extended protocol will be able to participate in certain programs. These include a scheme to allow countries to earn credit for emission cuts by providing anti-global warming technology to other nations. Japan hopes to participate in this program. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Um... Now, what's causing the ice caps to melt? Uh, from what I'm seeing, nuclear fallout. Now, in uh, when Chernobyl blew up, this is the same time. This is how these guys work. It's amazing. Okay, you, they had came out with this. Oh, aerosol cans. You know, don't don't spray aerosol cans because it hurts the ozone. You know what? That is baloney. Okay, when Chernobyl blew up, which was three and a half million pounds of spent fuel rods and uranium's a metal it's mined uh, and then you add probably what a hundred thousand tons or whatever of, of metal and concrete from those four structures and that thing blew up like no one's business and it blew a hole right through the ozone matter of fact that dude that was running the reports offed himself two years later i mean it, it was the it was the cover-up of cover-ups live 86 uh, I, it was a joke. And, and then all these atomic, uh, like World War II, when they blew up the uh, Japan, man, where do you think all that metal and debris and people and dirt went? It went airborne. And it went all over your ice pack. I mean, it's in the Himalayan ice cores. It's in every ice core around the planet. Uh, I mean, you got a, a hole in the ozone from this in the feminology test too. The the high altitude nuclear bombs they were detonating, man. It, you know, it's just like man, this is so dang wicked. It's unbelievable. It, and man, they keep snow dom. I mean, look at what they're doing to the public. Oh yeah, CO two gas. Yeah, yeah. So they they created a two hundred trillion dollar uh, new con with that. Okay, and then they're they're shoveling all their money into battery technology and stuff while everyone's thinking, oil, oil, oil. They're shoveling all their money the other way. It, 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 it's, a, it's a con. Going back over to post-glacial rebound, because that's, that's what you want to hear about. Mm -hmm. These guys know climate and money are going hand in hand, and that's why I bring the financial aspect to this. Because they're going hand in hand. Uh, just before Iceland, uh, volcanoes took off. They they just whacked that economy. They're grabbing the money before it happens. When I saw them do that in Italy, I go, oh, man. And then here in California, oh, they've been expecting it to go since 2008. Now, the, the 2030 report, which I have the Senate hearings over on my uh, YouTube channel, too. It's two hours long. They told 16 different branches of the CIA, told our Congress to go screw, okay? It's national security. Straight up. It's called climate security is what it's called. Uh, you don't think all those millions and millions and millions of FEMA coffins sitting all around this the United States is there by accident. And, and they had those things set up a couple of years ago because they thought they were already there at that point. A report sponsored by the U.S. government says a shipping surplus shale gas overseas will benefit the country's economy. This could pave the way for getting government permission to export the commodity. The U.S. Energy Department released the report on Wednesday. It says the export of shale gas and other natural gas products would raise energy prices but would help the economy overall. The government is now ready to examine whether to give the go-ahead to export projects. A number of energy firms hope to export natural gas as the surge in shale gas output pushes domestic gas prices sharply lower. 
The export plans include business with Japan's electric and gas utilities. Japanese energy firms have had to increase their use of thermal power plants since the nuclear accident and are keen to buy cheaper U.S. gas. Iraq is in the spotlight as it hosts the International Oil and Gas Conference and Exhibition. The country's leaders are trying to recover from the aftermath of war by tapping underdeveloped oil reserves. The four-day trade show kicked off Thursday in Iraq's southern oil hub of Basra. It's the largest event of its kind to be held in the country. More than 350 companies from around the world are represented at the fair. 60,000 people are expected to participate. Chinese firms stand out among the exhibitors. Sales agents from a machinery maker are promoting their technology that removes impurities from gas. The firm's president said he won't turn away any big business opportunity. Iraq is a new market. It's uh, you know, booming for oil and gas. We are a company provide unique technologies for the exploration of oil and gas. Iraq does have the third largest oil reserves in the world. Its leaders are courting investment from global oil industry firms to kickstart recovery. They're stepping in to fill a void as neighboring Iran is under economic sanctions for its nuclear program.